Hello everyone, this is Mike Check 95 with another Mike Check Productions Mike Check Movie Review. I feel like it's been a hot minute since I've done a uh, movie review, but I have a couple that's been sitting in my trusty little notebook here that I have been kind of semi putting off on recording. My apologies. The film that we watched today was Gremlins. This was a film that I have not seen since I was a little child. And based off of my memory, I don't remember much other than realizing that as a kid I was slightly scared of it. Viewing this film as like a horror comedy Christmas film is quite interesting. Seeing it now at the age I am now versus the age that I was as a kid, which again, very little recollection of what I can remember from it. Let's go through the numbers of Gremlins real fast. Critics rate this film an 8.6 out of 10. Audiences rate this film a 7.8 out of 10. The budget of this film was $11 million with a box office back a whopping $212 million. So this film made a lot of money. The one thing I kind of want to comment about that I don't think was really expressed in the first film. How was the Mogwai created? Is it really explained at all in the first Gremlins film and I've missed it? Is it explained in the second film that I haven't seen like pretty much at all? Or is it just kind of left up in the air? Like, if anybody knows like how the Gremlins were created or know the lore better than I do, like the books and everything, please let me know because I would like to know how that all came about. The three rules that were kind of interesting, uh, keeping the Mogwai out of light, don't get them wet and don't feed them after midnight. These these gremlins remind me of those Snickers commercials that they've been running for the last like couple like five six years maybe ten years. <laughs> Even though the I'm pretty sure the slogan "You're not you're not you when you're hungry" wasn't a catchphrase for Snickers back in the fucking 80s, but. It's hilarious thinking about that now. As the film went on, like, the evolved Mogwai that came from Gizmo didn't really like uh, Gizmo that much, or the, the first Mogwai, which kind of leaves, like, an obsolete sim syndrome or whatever, make, basically making them think, like, the second like, generation is better than the first, something like that. They weren't really 100% accurate on this one, or followed it the entire time, but Mogwai had green blood. Some of them did, some of them didn't, but for the most part, they had green blood. The other thing that I kind of wanted to like uh, talk about is that the gremlins uh, in the evolved state that they are in the Mogwai when they get into the more demonic looking stage after, after they've been fed food after midnight, they too uh, asexually reproduce but the thing that's interesting is that like it can go straight into the evolved form whereas the Mogwai original form evolved into the, the yeah. Basically, whatever form that they're in, they can asexually reproduce that same form again. I'll go through the cons first, since they're not really that much compared to the good. Not that I didn't really like the dad of the main character. I just kind of thought he was annoying with like trying to like shove his inventions like down people's throats and everything, even though they clearly didn't work. And I know that was supposed to be kind of like a comedy skit when it came to the film, but I guess when it came to like my viewing. Uh, viewing take of it, it kind of came off as like a little annoying and it also kind of took away like the pace of the film a little bit here and there and everything. Bring your dog to work, that's not a service dog. Yeah, the 80s were different, but not a service dog. Keep it inside the house. Don't let the old lady catch the dog if it's outside. Just leave it inside the house. That's all you gotta do. Deagle, the neighbor lady, I kind of thought she was a little bit extra. Again, 80s, different time. I still thought she was a little bit extra. Going back to the in the inventor, the inventions, I did not like any of them at all. The idea of them, the concept of them, the way they're presented, the way that they're supposed to work, just, it doesn't make any sense. Nothing really, it just hurts my brain just thinking about it again, so everything, forget about the inventions and the, and the inventor. All three of the rules are broken literally right off the bat because it's like they forgot the rules and everything and this kid who was given the gift of the Mogwai acts like he's at the age of yeah, he's just trying to catch a fly. The age of like ten when he's looks like he's sixteen, which I feel like would have more responsibility. Some of the edgy topics of this film I mainly wrote this down because like they talked about openly about like incidents that involve death and everything. Kinda like express it express it. 
kind of like express it in like conversation so that it gives like the viewer like the imagery of what was being explained and like the talking about the uh, the rate of suicide when it comes around Christmas season and all that like like that's all true facts and everything but I I would say for like a film like this again time period was different back in the 80s so probably didn't affect people that much but for like a current day viewer I feel like that can't really be expressed too loudly because it could still upset somebody even if it's not being directed towards someone it just it, it's all left up to interpretation and how you take it pretty much okay so moving on to the next con of the film um, not really a con uh, unless you're trying to really look for very scary horror movies this was classified as a horror comedy more so a comedy but I don't really see the horror elements of this film I mean maybe for kids but that's about it Definitely, there were deaths in the, in a kid's movie, but it's the 80s. So, there was a scene where they were in the bar, and they were drinking alcohol and everything, the, the uh, gremlins, and since alcohol has some form of, like, water in it, would it that make them reproduce as well, even though it's being ingested through their stomach, and they're spilling all over their body and everything, unless there's a chemical in alcohol that nullifies the whole... Uh, water reproducing aspect of the Mogwai, I didn't really get any explanation on that, so there's that aspect of it that was confusing. Electricity and electrical so sockets don't bother them, like there was one scene where there was one clinging uh, wires together creating an electrical spark, which is light, it should bother them, but it didn't, and then one stuck his finger in an electrical socket and he came out fine. Those are all the cons really, just some like weird errors in the film that thought they were funny but it's just it just didn't make sense when it came to following the rules. The pros now. Let's counter all these cons with pros. Um, I like the antique store that was holding the original Mogwai Gizmo. I thought that was pretty neat and everything. Spielberg's uh, directing, directing power and Jerry Goldsmith's soundtrack work made this film work out very well. Though struggling Billy is a good kid uh, a lot of people like in this film kind of made fun of him for what he's doing for his parents, but usually like I feel like kids that are raised like that uh, usually turn out better than they usually should be. The Mogwai design I enjoyed a lot, even though it looks like a demonic Furby. I fucking hate Furbies. I'll make a whole video about that by itself. And the animatronics of this film was great and fantastic. The smartness of Gizmo, it's and it's a. Uh, vocalization when it came to him trying to talk to Billy and everything. That was really great that show in the film that these uh, Mogwai creatures actually have intelligence and they can communicate in some way, shape, or form. This is what I'm dealing with, so don't mind the crackhead. The kitchen scene where the mother, when she's being attacked by pretty much five different gremlins, she surprisingly kicks all the ass in that scene. She takes down like four of the gremlins by herself, which was pretty amazing. She had some help with Billy near the end there, but just four of the five gremlins just taken out and right after they were pretty much brought into the the, uh, the world through the breaking of the rule of eating after midnight. So just that scene of her just destroying and killing each one, or just like stopping each one from pretty much destroying the house and or killing her was fantastic. <laughs> Talked about the Mogwai design, the gremlin design I enjoyed a lot too. More reptilian-like, reptile, demonic. Furby without the beak. There was also a couple stop motion scenes I also wanted to take take note and appreciate. That I like the art of animatronics. I like the art of stop motion when it comes to older films. It don't really those two forms don't really get used too much anymore because it gets taken over by CGI, which is very unfortunate because CGI is a lot more computer harder work to do. But I feel like that takes away a lot of the hard work and the. Uh, the, the way the film looks when it comes to using either stop motion or animatronics and sometimes animatronics and stop motion is better looking than computer stuff. Deagle's Stairway to Heaven is what I call it when she her uh, staircase chair gets uh, launched on like high speed straight out the uh, second story window I thought that was hilarious completely. <laughs> uh, I've seen this film twice this year so far and I love that scene every single time. Um, the bar scene, even though I had some issues with like how they were entertaining themselves or like just going crazy like with the drinking and the uh, 
the electrical socket and everything. But overall, the bar scene was very fun to watch, and the department store scene at the very end was also entertaining to watch as well, having the final confrontation between you know, Gizmo, Spike, and Billy with all his friends and animals coming in to help take out Spike before he starts another gremlin pandemic. All in all, the way this film was put together when it came to the action scenes, the animatronics, the stop motion, the writing of the story, the soundtrack, the design of the creatures and everything, put all together made a great, honestly good Christmas kids film where nowadays I feel like kids can watch with no problem, but back then definitely would need a parent to watch it with. Weighing out the pros and the cons, I remember seeing more cons than pros the more times I watch it, which sometimes is a bad thing, but at the same time, a lot of the good stuff shine more when it comes to the bad stuff. So the rating of this film I'm going to give it is an 8.9 out of 10. A little bit higher than both the critics and the audience scores, but I truly enjoyed this film. It's a great Christmas film. I mean, if you want to throw it on Halloween during the month of October, go for it. It's a fun film to watch with family and friends and loved ones. So Gremlins, definitely go, if you haven't seen it, definitely go watch it. <laughs> but that is it for my thoughts on Gremlins. The next time you shall see me will be the review of, as I flip through my notes to find what movie have I not reviewed yet. Um, Gremlins 2 with a new batch. But before... Gremlins to the new batch. We will be reviewing Labyrinth. But this is Mike Check 95, another Mike Check production, Mike Check movie review. Signing out.